name is Anouk Loon and I'm here today with Eugenia Staszewski and we will talk about avant-garde poetry and its connection to aviation and acrobatics. So, what is the connection between avant-garde poetry and aviation, Eugene? Aviation is an issue from the very beginning in really the first years of futurism in the question or rather in the solution to the question of what should the new language of poetry be? What should the new perspective of art be? And it starts with Marinetti, with the head of Italian futurists, going up as a passenger in September 1910, with the Peruvian aviator Juan Bilavucic. Juan Bilavucic has just, in the very beginning of September, flown from Paris to Bordeaux. It took four days, and he flew in his uh, voisin plane, and this is the postcard from the Milan uh, air show in September, where Bilavucic arrives as a hero and where he takes up VIP's passengers, including Marinetti. Marinetti has published about a year ago, a year and a few months ago, the first Futurist Manifesto. At this point, the Futurists are, as poets, identifying themselves with three verse. And then Marinetti goes up uh, in Bilavucic's plane as a passenger over the Milan Duomo, over the cathedral. And then again, a year later in 1911, in the fall of 1911, the Italians start their colonial adventure in Libya. And this is the first war where aviation is put to military use. Marinetti at this point is a journalist, a free journalist in Tripoli. For him, he's a nationalist, you know, aviation is modernity. He doesn't look at air war like with a kind of horror that, you know, we experience, but he looks at it as a kind of future. What's curious is that a few months later, Kamiansky uh, gets his license. And the first thing that Kamiansky does with his license is he goes to the Ottoman embassy and volunteers to fly against the Italians because, you know, he's a sportsman. Uh, they're sportsmen, and it's just sport. In 1912, Marinetti finally publishes the first manifesto of futurist poetry, the technical manifesto of futurist literature. And what it starts with is him looking back to his experience in uh, Milan, to his experience going up with Bela Vucic, and making up this entire new language for writing poetry, a language based on lists of nouns, which is really the grammar of Kamensky's tango with cows. And to him, this is inspired precisely by the motor of the voisin plane, which he went up in. The of the motor is how futurist poetry is supposed to sound. So basically, the week that Marinetti publishes this manifesto, Kamiansky has a show in Poland, the plane flips over, he falls into, you know, it's not a far fall. When he goes back to poetry, he goes back to poetry with this identity as poet aviator. There is Cocteau, Jean Cocteau, mm -hmm. the French poet, who wrote a whole poem, as he said, uh, or a series of poems on the French uh, aviator Roland Garou, also one of the very early... The first fighter. The fighter first base, fighter, yes. basically, exactly. Yeah. The first fighter. Also the first one to cross the Mediterranean Sea, like non-stop. Mm -hmm. Major figure in, in France uh, at the time. And Cocteau flies with him, like, several times. Wow. And he's also fascinated by the sound of the machine. Uh -huh. The sound of the machine figures like um, a few times uh -huh. in, his, in his poem. But 
it's also a sound of absolute silence. So right. somehow it's a sound of abstraction. And this is, this is really an unusual, like for, for Cocteau, it's a, it's a new, it's a new way of, of writing. So what he's doing in Le Cap de Bonne Espérance is really trying out something new. He's breaking up verse. He's like, it's all free verse. He's breaking up words. So just sounds, vowels, io, io, ao, eo, something totally different from what he has done before. So it's somehow like this huge imagination about aviation and about the aviator being l'homme moderne being the the man of the future being uh the superhuman somehow like the one who has new perspectives for us maybe nowadays probably not that understandable like how new this perspective was just seeing the earth from from yeah. from up and uh how this change of perspectives like calls for the poets like for a really new way of expressing things here is uh, Kamensky's poem about his first flight, his flight in November in, of 1911 in Warsaw. You're supposed to read it from the bottom up. At the bottom, you have a sentence, and then it kind of breaks down into words, and then the words break down into syllables, and then you just have diphthongs and vowels, and then you have silence, right? So it's very, very similar, right? I wanted to read to you the Garot poem by Zdanevich. So Ilya Zdanevich, Ilyas, comes to Paris in 1920 or 21, becomes friends with Cocteau. Zdanevich also wrote about Garot, and he wrote about Garot in 1915. And what he wrote, it's not the typographic thing uh, like I just showed you with Kamensky, but what he wrote is a classic Italian piece of words in freedom. Just totally Italian, totally Marinetti, but in Russian and about Garot. And the plot of this poem is uh, that Garot dies because he crashes into a German Zeppelin. And this is a story that was in the newspapers, but it was false. Bravo Garot, 11 December, height 5,600 meters. Bravo Garot, fields, sprawl, smokestacks, sense, woo, wind, cloud, flock, more, more, sun blinds, ocean made mad, drool, drool, 5,600 meters. Bravo Garot. 1914, ro, 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 Zeppelin, rose, run for it. Zeppelin, Zeppelin, crash, bomb, mist, run for it. Watch out. Zeppelin, Zeppelin, death into the Zeppelin, crush, crash, down. D death, bravo garo, bravo garo, bravo garo, go, 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 death, death. Well, that was wonderful. <laughs> and that was really brutal also. Aviation goes all, like, goes mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all through these isms and through the different ways of, like, how can we manage to find new ways to adapt our poetry to modern life, but also to keep something from, I mean, aviation has also this mythical side to it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's also the like, yeah, yes, yeah. it's the Icarus. I wonder if like, if Kamensky also takes up on this or if it's just Absolutely. like modern. 100%, yeah. 100%. The way that this has a really nasty aspect that somehow we dissociate you, from from the art, but you know, in fact, the avant-garde 
and recently I was writing something about the word avant-garde and the way that the word avant-garde is actually, we think of it as left, but it's actually left and right word. And it, in Italy in the 20s and the 30s, you know, all of this vocabulary is really the vocabulary of fascism, right? The first uh, use of the phrase Russian avant-garde that I found is a Russian fascist newspaper in the 30s in China under the Japanese occupation. And there's a way, there's a very unpleasant way of thinking about the avant-garde uh, politically as what is it the avant-garde of? Well, it's the avant-garde of the revolt of the masses, which gives us, you know, both communism and fascism. The fact that it starts not just with aviation, but with military aviation is something that, you know, we, looking back, need to pay attention to. Yeah, we need to pay attention to. And it's also, I mean, aviation, it has this, like, superhuman, like, ring to it. Like, that's, may, maybe that's a good, like, bridge to uh, the acrobat. The aviator is the superhuman who has the power to fly and to, has the machine and, like, underneath him, or um, I found a, a quotation of Apollinaire saying like the men of the future are the men of the of aviation mm -hmm. who don't have mothers anymore, but their fathers are the machines. So Wow, that's, a, that's also in Marinetti, that's Mafarc uh, Le Futurist. Yes, exactly. So it's everywhere. And the connection between like the idea of the acrobat as somehow the the one who's defying all risks, who is able to do things other people cannot do. This is a very close connection, at least Cocteau draws between the aviator and the acrobat. For example, mm -hmm. in the libretto of the Ballet Parade, which mm -hmm. he's doing with Picasso, who is also like a huge fan of mm, yeah, yeah. acrobats and uh, has painted and them aviation, all along, yeah. and aviation, together with Eric Satie, the Ballet Russe, mm -hmm. um, and Leonid Massin. And they're going for a trip to Rome to see Marinetti and Balla uh, when they're mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. uh, towards Parade. So they're really in conversation with mm -hmm. the futurist yeah. ideas, and I think merging all these motives uh, of modern life, but also like drawing from m like mythical sources mm -hmm. at the same time. So Cocteau is talking about aviation as, or, or the planes as the archangels, uh -huh. like modern archangels. Kamensky has this whole history of work in the circus. So he starts the 1910s as an aviator but he ends the 1910s as a sporadic circus performer. Wow. I think 1917. Uh, he starts performing, I think, in Georgia. But anyway, in, in the Caucasus. Um, uh, he starts performing by I don't know, wearing outlandish clothes, riding a horse in a circus, and reciting his poem. He performs as a poet in the circus. And then he starts writing circus I mean, circus performances. He uh, writes, I forgot the name of it, but it was some socialist circus performers, the circus performance, which combined acrobatics with industrialism. I mean, just some kind of really just insane thing. I mean, it's it's also the the, the search for new forms, right? Because right. like theater doesn't work anymore somehow. and. Circus is the real thing yeah. because it's like real danger. It's real animals. It's like real feats. And that's probably the, also the same with aviation. It's like, it's the real thing. It's not a performance anymore. It's let, not like we're staging things here, but yeah, we're it's, like yeah, yeah, yeah. doing yeah, it's it. It's not science. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's one more thing. So not only is aviation and the circus, not only are they real? But they also have, this, the circus especially has a non-causal plot, right? It's just one thing follows another thing, follows another thing. So it's basically a montage-based plot, which is fundamentally about joining things that don't belong together. Yeah, which makes it also like a new way of relating to 
a world that functions the same way, yeah, right? Like yes, in, yes, in, yes. in the perceived imagination. Yes, yeah, like simultaneity, right? Like the, the simultaneity of the newspaper, right? Of the future simultaneity. Simultaneity and the idea like of a new kind of being that has to be produced, new kind of subjects that yeah. have to be yeah. produced and that, that are also like, like totally from this world. So even if there is mythical, like, like relating to some mythical dimension or a cosmic, like, um, the acrobat is is doing stuff that nobody has done before, like the aviator, mm -hmm. but they're somehow pushing boundaries. They're not like performing miracles, but mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. like showing that like absolute progress is possible somehow. Right. Like this is the the phantasma.